We begin this half hour with a man's inspiring fight. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Glenda Lewis. He's gone through the unthinkable twice. Our Carolyn Clifford joins us now with a look at his journey and who he's inspired the most. Carolyn, this is incredible. It is incredible. And first, I want to say welcome Thank back you. to you. Appreciate Glad it. to have you back. Thank you so much. Well, it is Heart Health Month. And tonight, we want to share the story about a man who is literally considered a walking miracle. He has undergone not one, but two heart transplants. And while many counted him out, he has not only beat the odds, but he has inspired his own daughter along the way. Eric Morganroth was living the American dream, attending the University of Michigan as an undergrad. Smart as a whip, he was waiting to apply for med school. Then, without warning, the unthinkable. Woke up one morning and just couldn't catch my breath. In his early 20s, Eric had never broken a bone, but he was having a tough time taking a shower. He drove himself to the hospital. Within minutes, he was admitted and then transferred to the University of Michigan's Cardiovascular Center. They had put me on, at the time it was called Bivads, which were heart pumps that were the size of like a Volkswagen engine. And it was pushing blood, you know, through my body. Basically, his heart was being pumped artificially. I had these big tubes coming into my chest and out of my chest, and if I moved or got up and jostled one of those tubes, I might not survive. He was in and out of a medically induced coma and diagnosed with myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle. It can weaken your heart, lead to heart failure or sudden death. I don't think I was supposed to survive it, but ultimately I had some incredible care and some luck. Eric was quickly put on the waiting list for a heart transplant. I mean, because you're knocking on death's door. I'm knocking on death's door. I was not able to survive without you know, intervention. I had machines keeping me alive. He was in bed on heart machines for 34 days. Which at the time was the longest in the world anyone had lived on heart bivads. At age 25, Eric gets a heart transplant. I had to learn how to live life differently. 25 meds a day, new diet, and caring for a brand new heart. A heart that leads him to marry his wife, Andrea, a year later. Soon after, they have two children, and life seems relatively normal. Then, more than decades later, a yearly stress echo test is worrisome. I get a phone call from my doctor, which was not typical, and he said, I need you to come back. I don't like what I saw in the echo. Once again, he's admitted to the hospital and told his heart is failing. I'm thinking about my wife, I'm thinking about my children, I'm thinking about, you know, whether or not I'm never going to leave the hospital. He was offered OKT3, a silver bullet medication to take him out of rejection. But this wonder drug can only be used once. If he goes through rejection with the new heart, it cannot be used to save him again. They opt for high doses of other drugs to get him out of rejection. And I pulled my chart and I started looking at it and I saw the term terminal on it. And I called my wife and I'm like, it says terminal. And like, I started to choke up. After the second heart transplant, he was in rejection, and they needed that wonder drug to save him. Now, in his late 30s, it worked. And your baby girl, who's only six, is saying, Daddy, I want to be a doctor. Yeah. I want to take care of you yeah. and take care of other people like you. Yeah. And she meant it yeah. because she's going to med school. She's been accepted to several med schools. She's planning on currently going into cardiothoracic medicine. What has this journey been like for you and your kids and your family? Overall, we're just, you know, grateful to have him and to have him doing so well. And Eric, just thankful for his care, for his family, and his third chance at life. I look forward to every birthday, because every birthday means I've survived another year. Ooh, I've seen that story and saw it again and choked me up again. Well, today their family believes in promoting organ donation. They suggest you talk to your own family about organ donation and let them know your thoughts if you desire that in the future. And come May, Eric will be leading the Washtenaw County Heart and Stroke Walk. They chose him because they wanted a patient with an inspiring story, and he certainly has one. If you want to hear more about organ donation, head to our website at WXYZ.com. And Glenda, you know how important it is to become an organ donor. You can save so many lives. And wow, that man right there can inspire anyone to do so. Wow, second chance. Oh, he has yes. more to do here. Obviously. Oh, yes, he does, doesn't he? It's great to see you talk with him. Thank you, Karen. You are welcome.